and your evergreens, they don't like it. So they get yellow. What you have to do is you have to put either sulfur or aluminum sulfate to bring it down so that way they're able to extract the nutrients from the soil. And Otherwise, how did you learn all these wonderful facts? I mean, oh, this I, is stuff that people well, nobody this, knows. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is an ongoing thing that I've been doing. So, yeah, I mean, this is not, I, I worked about five, six years on the book. And, and before that, I was into uh, gardening. So I know all these things. And then uh, I think the Master Gardener program helped me a lot, uh, you know, to to understand the soil. And, and, uh, and um, uh, with your blog, you're giving people lots of tips and information. And also, I understand, as we have a show here tonight, uh, that you're thinking of doing a, a gardening show about the organic gardening as yes. you as the host. Can you tell us a little bit about that aspiration and what you want to do with it? What, what I would like to do is I would like to go to the people's gardens, mm -hmm. a la Victory Garden, but not that type of concept. I want to go there to tell them to work with them. And if I see something that's not right, I would say, well, what do you think? What do you think this needs? And if they don't know it, I would tell them. So you're kind of a vision of improving uh, yes. um, what they're doing and then therefore whatever they're providing for people. And also, it yes. sounds like at the same time informing people who are doing it on their own. Yes, because there are many, many great. people. Yeah. Yes, because there are many, many people. They've been doing this for a long, long time. I have a dear friend, it's my age, and uh, when uh, he bought my book, I said, well, welcome you know, to the higher level, which right. is true. Yeah. See, because once you understand, it's like these programs on television, that they go to bars, to uh, or, or restaurant impossible or or things like this to teach people what they're doing wrong see that's what i want to do and a lot of restaurants now are really taking organic food and putting it out in farm to table well, restaurants and they're want. getting very yes. popular yes that's what i want because i a gar you know people i know that have gardens who are using lots of pesticides they have got you know, people have gotten sick that I know of. Of course, you know, and oh, it, sure. Just spraying it constantly, thinking that's the only way they can it's not garden, the because otherwise it's too impractical or whatever. I mean, that was the image before that was yes. just for a few people, but. Well, before, what people <coughs> did is they put lots of, a lot of fertilizer and plants grew, but at the end of the season, the soil was sterile. Yeah. See, because the chemical fertilizers, they're based on salt. And they, they dehydrate everything. They give food to the plant, but at the end of the season, it's all gone. What I like to use is I like to use soybean meal, even though there are, there's soybean meal out there that's organic. So that's what you have to do, because it could be also GMO. So yeah. what, what you have to do is you have to buy organic, and there is a uh, uh, OMRI, Organic Material Research in Institute, they are the uh, benchmark of the organic movement. Oh, See, so, they can, the so people can look report. up yes. that if they can if say a, If it, it has safe? the tag oh, that's great of to OMRI, know. then you know it's, uh, it's a good product. Uh, I use soybean meal and alfalfa meal for nitrogen. I use rock phosphate for, uh, for that. And then I use uh, either green sand or sulf or mag, sulfur mag, sulfur, magnesium, and potassium, uh, or the, uh, the, uh, the other way, to, uh, because I know that they're all organic. And how, I mean, for somebody that isn't really into gardening that much, how long does it take for somebody to get good at doing it well and actually having good food produced? Christina, you never know enough. Yeah. I've been, I've, been, I've been doing this for 67 years. Yeah, wow. And I still, I am learning things. So when somebody comes up, I mean. Well, when you go to Europe, I mean, is Europe way, because they haven't departed so much from the old ways or something? When I go to Europe, the young people want to give me brand new seeds. And I said, no, I said, yeah. I want your grandfather's seeds. He said, oh, you, you're old fashioned. <laughs> yeah. And I said, no, no, it's coming back. So you see. Now everybody is getting, and the people my age, they say, it's because they don't remember the DDT and all that stuff that they use. But now, 
people even there are getting uh, but not all it's like over here some people say well organic what's what's organic but I for me one organic food for myself I do organic vegan but I teach organic did you always eat organic or just oh yes oh yes oh your whole life yeah. uh, most of our lives yes yeah. most of our lives yes That's so great. I, I yeah. really enjoy uh, uh, I don't eat meat very much I eat uh, chicken sometimes but I like to have, this is what we have. Every night, my wife and I, we have a, a salad because I grow my uh, lettuce all winter long. I have uh, a, one large gold frame ha and four small ones. Oh, with a cover or a like cover, a hot yes. house? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's what you, you cover. One is uh, four are against the house and one is uh, in the garden. So it can be a year-long hobby or for, uh, not oh, even sure. a hobby, a well, necessity, really. Look, if you don't do anything in the, in the winter, at least you're using some of your soil. See, because once you amend the soil perfectly, then you have to have at least three crops during the season and one in the winter. Well, so what happens? It just, if you don't do it, it gets kind of... Well, no, what you do is, uh, I mean, you don't <laughs> want any soil to be unused. Sure, because what you do is you have one crop, and then the other crop, and then the third crop. And then what you do is, if you have three beds or four beds or five beds, what you do is you... Rotate it. Yes, you have, uh, let's say, cucumbers here this year. Then next year you have, have it over here. And then you have broccoli here. So every... And put all the families together. See, now in the Solonaceous family, you have potatoes, tomatoes, uh, eggplants, and peppers. So you put them all in one uh, section. Wow. So you put the tomatoes in the back because they're higher. All the tomatoes go towards the north side, and then the smallest plant, and then the smallest plant. And then you have uh, broccoli or uh, cauliflower, or kale, kohlrabi over here. See, and then you just move them around. And uh, for the average person also, how much, if they wanted to grow their own vegetables, say for how much time does it take to garden? To, to once the garden... As far as it like a working person or something? Is okay, it, well, yeah. look, once the garden is amended, once the soil is amended, then the only thing you need is maybe half hour a day. Uh, uh, most of the time is spent weeding yeah. and, and the problem is yeah. you, you know the reason why you weed is because you neglected your weeds the year before oh really For sure because yeah. they say one year of seeds seven years of weeds oh wow I didn't so i don't have uh, weeds in my garden really no 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 weeds weed free garden because what i do is i get my little cultivator and i just uh, surf grub about about an inch when it's hot, so even if I have little seedlings, you disrupt the underneath and they all die. What is that? It's a. It, it's 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 like a little scraper, uh -huh. and it just scrapes the top, and that's it. And it doesn't do anything to the underneath. See, because you don't want uh, say now that you grow in beets, and if you go too deeply, then you will. Uh, uh, damage the beetroot. So that's why you just about an inch and a half or so on top where the little uh, seeds are, uh, are sprouting. Boom, boom. Every week you do it. Beautiful. And what, uh, what about uh, water? When you water it, does it have to be special water or just tap water? It's okay. Well, tap water is okay if you don't have anything else. Yeah. I like to use rainwater. Oh, wow. Well, sure, I have yeah. uh, so you collect, barrels. Yeah. Oh, sure, you collect the water. And also what I do is I, uh, I use a lot of seaweed. And what is that? I that put gives, seaweed yeah. into my rainwater. I let it stay for three or four days, and, and it becomes viscous, like oil. Then I put half uh, the chlorinated water. See, water, what I do is I... Wow. I collect the water and I let, it, uh, I let the chlorine evaporate for 24 hours. So, see, because you don't want chlorine, yeah. uh, especially on the leaves. Yeah. So, and then I use half of that, half of uh, this viscous uh, seaweed extract, 
and have uh, water, and I water my plants. And the other one I almost forgot is composting. To for composting, I not that's only do big composting. Now. I mean, there are kids doing that now. So. Okay, composting is one of the three things that you could do. You could do composting, you could do a, a vermiculture, have a little container with worms. And <laughs> Well, yeah. I keep it in the basement. Yeah. They're little rascals, you know, squiggly <laughs> things. And, and well, you know, they consume the. You buy scraps. worms like it? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I give mine away because yeah. I have lots of them now. And, yeah. uh, in, fact, in fact, every time I do a, uh, a presentation on worms, I bring a batch. And, uh, do you and have I to say, feed them if they're in oh, the box? Sure. Oh, sure. Uh, oh. What I do is I feed, well, the that's kitchen scraps. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what true. I do is I, uh, sure, instead of. Uh, uh, throwing the kitchen scraps away, yeah. that's what you do. And then you get leaves and you put leaves or a shred of newspaper, cardboard, they'll eat anything as long as you keep it 50% uh, humid. I mean, yeah. the humidity has to be, see, because worms are made up of 90 But short plus. if people don't like the worms, the composting is Well, quite then you do bokashi. What's that? Okay. Bokashi is the Japanese way of doing compo composting, is a fermented type of thing that you do. You just put some bran, either rice or wheat bran, and a little compo uh, uh, scraps, a little of that, then scraps, a little of that, and you keep it about three or four months, and boom. And the juice that you get from it is fantastic for, for your seedlings. Wow. So all these things, that's what, uh, see, I am enthusiastic. And my problem is that I wish that everyone else would be as enthusiastic as I am. Uh, but I know that most people haven't grown up with what I have grown up. So I am in heaven if there's such a thing. So I am back to my childhood and I'm being, you know, who I was at, at one time. So because I, uh, I was in the hairdressing business for a long, long time. So I couldn't do all these things. But now I'm back to do what I was doing as a free child. Well, that's one way. And also that I... As a last thought, um, you have another book that's about fountain. What's it, the name of it? It was uh, Rainbows about in the your Fountain. Childhood, yes, is it? it was Rainbows in the Fountain, because I remember when the Germans were in our house uh, during the war, and uh, I used to love to play Lily Marlene, and they had a record player, and I learned that I count to ten, and every time if I every time I count to ten they let me play one time. So uh, after 10 times, then it says, that's it. Nine, is, is, you know, they would say no more, I mean, because I would play it all day long. And uh, there was also my grandmother, my mother, and the problem, the well, family yeah, problem. Well, yeah, it's a wonderful memoir. That. Yes, it's, it's, it's a very I'm nice. And then I have uh, uh, another one with which is a fiction. It's called uh, Hairdresser's Revenge because I was, it's about a young fellow. And when I first started, people assumed that all hairdressers were uh, homosexuals. Well, in the 60s, I mean, people didn't know. I mean, they would say to me, says, well, don't you like girls? And I said, yeah, why? <laughs> yeah, but you can Oh, you I know. Go my, father, <laughs> my father is a ballet dancer. He had the same problem. Well, they thought so everybody uh, is not. Yeah, um, exactly. Anyway, so. we have to stop because it's, we've run out of time, but we we'll certainly do another show and maybe well. uh, see you do a demonstration of something sure. that you do I'll, in the garden. I would love to. Okay, thanks okay, again Christine. for coming. Well, thank you for having me. And um, you can start your garden and get some tips from Nick and in his book or in... Um, blog or in other books and I'm going to start a garden I, on my windowsill and uh, it's I, organic is definitely the way of the future for most of us hopefully and for the bees will help the bees okay good night and we'll see you next time